you come up with this idea of the, uh, the temporary spending to reopen the government? Well, one of the ideas suggested is they open it, they pay a sort of a, a prorated down payment for the wall, which I think people will agree that you need. You need the wall. In fact, I see a lot of the Democrats are all almost all of them are breaking saying, look, walls are good. Walls are good. Big difference from what you had two or three weeks ago. And uh, the vote, we had the vote on our bill, which we won 50 to 47. That was our bill. But we got one Democrat. It was 50 to 47. And we need, as you know, we have to get 60. We don't have 60 votes, so we need Democrat support. We didn't get Democrat support other than uh, from a actually wonderful man, as you know, Senator Manchin. And uh, who's doing the right thing for his people? I mean, he's doing the right thing for West Virginia, frankly. And uh, the other bill, it was 5244, and that included a lot of uh, hurricane relief for a lot of different states. So it's sort of uh, not something some of them really voted for the hurricane relief, which they felt they needed. That was 5244. But you need 60, so that didn't go anywhere. So we knew they both were uh, not going to go anywhere, we thought. And now Mitch is negotiating with uh, Chuck Schumer. And we'll see what happens. I think they just left a the meeting. They just had a meeting. I think they're going out to see their people, but they just left. So we had two bills. I think we did very well. The Republicans held, except for two. The Republicans held. Two were not there. They couldn't. They weren't able to be there. So there were two non-votes. Uh, but even with two non-votes, I think they would have been good votes for us. It's 50 to 47. We won. But we need 60 votes because of the 60-vote rule. And so... Uh, I just really want to thank the Republicans for holding. Uh, again, on the other one, that was the opening up. That's 52-44, but you need 60 votes, so it's a long way short. And a lot of that, a lot of those votes were based on the fact that uh, there was hurricane relief for certain states. But what would you need for a temporary spending without money for the wall? Would you just, just to reopen? Well, I wouldn't be happy with it. I wouldn't be happy. But we have a lot of alternatives. Honestly, we have everybody. Look, for the most part, people agree when I say everybody. Uh, I would say almost everybody agree. We have to have border security. We have to have a wall in order to have border security. You cannot have border security without a wall. I mean, we can play games and we can talk about technology. We can talk about drones flying around. You know, right now, formed is an 8,000 person uh, caravan. And the caravan is heading our way. Congratulations. We have another one. We stopped the first one. We stopped the second one. Uh, I wouldn't say that Tijuana is too happy. But they're happily living in Tijuana right now, and a lot of them have gone back. But we stopped them, but it's very tough. And if we didn't have a wall in those areas, it would have been very hard to stop them. We have the military, and we have the Border Patrol. They've done an incredible job, and ICE has done an incredible job all over the country, frankly. Uh, we've removed thousands of MS-13 and others out of our country. But if we had a wall, we wouldn't have that problem. It would be great. So uh, we have a lot of alternatives, but I'm just honored that uh, almost all of the Republicans voted for our bill. Our bill is the bill that we were really focused on. But we had almost all of the Republicans, so the end result was 50 to 47. Uh, the Democrats lost one uh, that came over to our side. So they pretty much held and we held. And again, we were missing two Republicans. They couldn't vote. They were not here. Well, I, I have to find out after this meeting. We'll find out. But right now, uh, Mitch McConnell's meeting with Chuck Schumer and see if they'll have to see what happens. Uh, they're meeting to see if they can work out something, maybe on a temporary basis where we start. But I have, you know, we have a lot of alternatives. There are a lot of people that want this to happen. I'll tell you who wants this to happen. The military wants this to happen because this is a virtual invasion of our country, of drugs, of human traffickers, of so many different things, of criminals. It's an invasion of our country. And the military wants this to happen. And the Border Patrol wants this to happen. And by the way, Border Patrol said all of the drones flying up in the air, having a lot of fun flying drones all over the place. They don't mean a thing when they look down and they see thousands of people rushing our border. The only thing that works is a strong barrier or wall. Have you talked to Nancy Pelosi? I have not. I haven't spoken to Nancy Pelosi, no. No. But I'm here, you know? I haven't left except for a beautiful evening in Iraq. I've been here for a, I've been here for a long time.
Mr. President, you see Wilbur Ross said that he doesn't understand why federal workers would need help getting food. Can you understand? No, I haven't. I haven't heard the statement, but I, I do understand that perhaps he should have said it differently. Uh, local people know who they are when they for, go for groceries and everything else. And I think what Wilbur is probably trying to say is that uh, they will work along. I know banks are working along. If, if uh, you have mortgages, the mortgagees, the mortgage, uh, the folks collecting the interest and all of those things, they work along. And that's what happens in time like this. They know the people. They've been dealing with them for years. And they work along the grocery store. Uh, and I think that's probably what Wilbur Ross uh, meant. But I haven't seen his statement, now. But he's done a great job. I will tell you that. Yes. Well, I, just well, I just want to know, aren't you worried to leave the American diplomats behind? Well, we're looking at Venezuela. It's a very sad situation. Uh, that was the richest state in all of that area. That's a big, beautiful area and by far the richest. And now it's uh, one of the poorest places in the world. That's what socialism gets you when they want to raise your taxes to 70 percent. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I've been watching our opponents, our future opponents, talking about 70 percent. Number one, they can't do it for 70 percent. It's got to be probably twice that number. But maybe more importantly, what happens is you really have to study and take a look at what's happened to Venezuela. It is a very, very sad situation. So uh, we have our eye very closely on Venezuela, very closely. Mr. President, if, if Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer can come to some sort of agreement, will you support the results? Of this well, it depends agreement? what the agreement is. I mean, yeah, but if they come to a reasonable agreement, I would support it. Yeah. Even if it has no wall money? Or does it have to have wall I, I only, look, look, uh, I have other alternatives if I have to, and I'll use those alternatives if I have to. Uh, we want to go through the system. Uh, we have to have a wall in this country. We have criminals pouring into our country. And I'm not talking about the southern border. They don't stay there. They go through They permeate all throughout the country, including places like Wisconsin, a lot of, a lot of different places. And um, that's the problem. I say that we would cut our crime, you know, we're doing very well on crime rate compared to past years and past <coughs> administrations. But I think our crime rate would go way down. And I know our drug rates, our drug, what, what's happening is the drugs are pouring in. And yes, they come through the ports of entry, but the big trucks come through areas where you don't have a wall and you have wide open spaces. We have to have the wall. You'd stop drugs. You'd stop human trafficking. I mean, human trafficking where they tie up women and they put duct tape on their mouths and they put them in the back seat of a car or in a van. They don't come through a port of entry because the people at the port of entry are going to see that. That's not like hiding drugs in the engine or in the hubcaps and they have incredible ingenious ideas. I mean, frankly, I've said some of these people are so genius. If they were ever legit, they'd become um, very rich people. But what they do is they go through the ports of entry with small stuff, but the big stuff comes through areas where you have nobody watching. I mean, you have hundreds of miles of open space and they go out there and they're loaded up with drugs or they have women in the backseat of the cars with duct tape all over the place. It's a disgrace. And you don't catch them. They make a left. You don't even know the difference between Mexico and the United States. They make a left turn after they go out 20 miles, 40 miles, five miles in some cases and less. They make a left turn. They're in the United States. And then they do whatever they have to do. You need the wall. And we can all play games and we can all talk about technology. I know more about technology than anybody. If you don't have the wall, the technology doesn't work. First of all, the wall is based on, I mean, it's all based. Any technology works only with the wall. Not going to work otherwise. You need the wall. In fact, a lot of the technology is put on top of the wall. That's how you see it. The cameras and everything else. I mean, they literally put the technology, they fasten it to the wall. Then you have drone technology, and that's great. In terms of what are you going to do? You're going to follow the people? First of all, once they step into the country, you know what happens, right? You know what they do. It's called, what do they call it, you know? They, they put one foot in our country, right? And we got them. That's it. So the drones don't help us. We have to keep it out. We have, we have no choice but to have a wall or a barrier. And if we don't have that, it's just not going to work. So it's very important to me. All right, one more question. What's your message to federal workers who are missing another paycheck this week? I love them. I respect them. I really appreciate the great job they're doing. Uh, they, you know, many of those people that are not getting paid 
are totally in favor of what we're doing because they know the future of this country is dependent on having a strong border, especially a strong southern border, because we have tremendous violence and crime coming through that border. We have tremendous drugs. We have the human trafficking. We have MS-13 and gangs pouring through those borders. And if we don't strengthen those borders, we're going to have a big problem in the future. One of the people I blame is myself, because the economy is so strong right now, stronger than ever before. Today, today, right now, we have more people working in the United States than has ever worked in this country before. That's a great compliment. So I blame myself, okay? But the fact is, people come up because our country is doing so well, and they want to break through our borders. The fact is, we want them to come up. We have a big, we took in more people last year, legally, than we have in a long time. Because we need them, because we have a lot of, a lot of companies are coming into our country. So we need people coming in. I want people to come in, but they have to come in legally, and they have to come in through merit. They have to be able to help companies. And if they don't help companies, and if they don't help our country, uh, we can't do that, folks. We just can't do that, right? Why did you decide to agree to Nancy Pelosi? Well, it's really her choice. I mean, I would have done it in a different location, but I think that would be very disrespectful to the State of the Union to pick some other place. I could have done it. I could have gone to a big auditorium and gotten 25,000 people in one day, and you've been there many times. Uh, but I think that would be very disrespectful to the State of the Union. So uh, what she said I thought was actually reasonable. Uh, we'll have the State of the Union when the shutdown is over. And when do you think that's going to be? That I can't tell you. That I can't tell you. But we have a lot of alternatives, but we need border security. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. So is this State of the Union showdown uh, just another attempt at a power play by Nancy Pelosi? Here to weigh in is North Carolina Congressman Ted Budd. Thank you so much for joining us, Congressman. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Heather. It's uh, great to be with you. So as we begin, let's take a look at these dueling tweets between Nancy Pelosi and the president. And as we bring those up for our viewers at home, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, beginning with Nancy Pelosi's move to basically disinvite the president to the House. Look, that's very unfortunate. She was, uh, like all uh, speakers in, in recent history, she's invited the president and then she disinvited him. Uh, we think she should go ahead and continue to, to have him there uh, on schedule. Uh, it, it would be a good unifying moment to hear the president's views. And of course, they would have the opportunity to respond. So we wish uh, they wouldn't bring politics mm -hmm. into this. Uh, it was a new low water mark. Yeah, I mean, it really was amazing. But then I was surprised when I woke up this morning because I went to sleep thinking that the president was thinking about an alternative to venue and then I wake up and discover that he's saying you know we're gonna hold off and do it after the shutdown what did you think about that decision I think it was actually a smart decision to remember uh, what the State of the Union is. It's uh, the executive branch coming to the legislative branch. Um, and so he, he wants to remember uh, what it's originally about. It's not a promotional speech. It's not a, a rally. Uh, but uh, it, I think he's going to honor the House. And, mm -hmm. and I think it puts pressure to get us back in, uh, get the government back open. Yeah. You know, I mean, but there's... A Everyone in the country needs to hear from the president right now, of course, including the 800,000 or so federal employees uh, who have been furloughed or, or aren't getting paid right now. Let's talk about what is supposed to happen today in terms of these dueling funding measures. What do you think? Well, I try not to predict what happens over in the Senate, uh, but it should be interesting. Uh, Leader McConnell has uh, said that he's going to have two bills, one with wall funding, one without, uh, and we'll see what it, what it takes to get 60 votes for those. Right. Uh, not sure if either one is going to uh, get that amount of votes, but uh, at least it, it's, uh, it shows where people stand. So tell me if either one does get the amount of votes that it needs to move on to the House, what will happen there in your chamber? Well, uh, of course, we would take that bill up, and uh, especially if it, it didn't have funding, we know that Nancy Pelosi would take that bill up most likely. Yeah. But uh, anything without funding will not get signed by the president. And, and you speak from experience because you were part of this delegation of nine congressmen who just toured our southern border. Uh, what do Americans need to know? What did you see? So I'm somebody that has been supportive of the wall all along, but to go there and to hear the false arguments against the wall and to know, you know, th there is 1,954 miles of wall and there's a lot of rugged terrain, but we could still build it on almost every bit of that terrain. We saw some of the toughest terrain in southern Arizona, 
But sometimes that wall goes from the, the road checkpoints that you would go and you would have the border crossing and you would meet and you, and you would get checked out by Customs and Border Patrol. And then you would go five miles out from there to the east or to the west. And that wall ends and it becomes a single strand barbed wire fence. Uh, all you have to do if you wish, wish to cross illegally was to go away from that checkpoint five miles mm -hmm. and simply step over a barbed wire fence. Um, uh, it, it's ridiculous. It's very sad. And we're seeing ranchers on, on both sides, uh, Mexican ranchers, U.S. ranchers, saying, please build the wall. They're tired of uh, uh, the cartels uh, taking over their lands, sending 10, 30, uh, 10 20, 30,000 people across a year yeah. across private lands. And it's, we don't uh, hear so difficult. much about that, like the drug cartels who, who really are, are controlling these areas right now. Uh, hence the uh, president's new uh, phrase, build the wall and crime will fall. So uh, uh, thank you so much, Congressman Bud. We really appreciate you joining us. Um, I'm from North Carolina, so hello to all my folks down there. You're doing a good, good job for them. Thank you. Thank you.